All right, guys, just want to talk about JC Holland's responses related to the Philippines and unicorns. Um, the high birth rate in the Philippines with non married mothers, etc., and teen mothers, it's been there even before I went to the Philippines. You can thank some of that on the church, and it's not because these people are following religion, but the fact is they interfere in contraceptive. Um, contraceptives in the Philippines. They also have interference from pro-life out of America. There's a lot of political stuff that goes on around this stuff. Um, I've covered it before, but I don't think I've done any videos on it I, because this is, I, I researched this a long time ago and it, I'll tell you what, some of the stuff that goes on is, <laughs> I don't know if Duterte is aware of some of the stuff that goes on, especially with pro-life. Um, but I'm leaving that to one side, it's a big, big uh, topic but yeah that that's been there a long time um the religion side i do think a lot of people are selective on religion this is why i say my personal view and if somebody follows religion or whatever that's fine as long as not hurting anybody else that's my view on it now should religion interfere in state um my personal view is no not in these sort of instances where it's actually encouraging poverty that that's that's my view on it quite strong view on that um, but moving past that, getting to the unicorns and the unicorn being mythical. Well, that's the point. That's the point of a unicorn because they're very hard to find in the first place because they're mythical. Um, so actually meeting somebody in the Philippines uh, as a match, is it impossible? Are they more mythical, etc.? I would say the chance of finding a good relationship in the Philippines is much higher for many guys than they would in the West. And I would also add, JC from, from Holland has had experience of dating some men in the Philippines. And so any women out there want to know about dating men in the Philippines and experiences, JC is ideal for speaking to about that. But I do also recognize in the Philippines, there is a, the, the poverty link can often be a major hindrance. And this is why I do recommend actually spending your time, go on holiday. If you're moving over there, move over there and just settle in do not go out there going i need a relationship you know, tapping the fingers need to get married by tuesday got to get on my flight by friday get her visa so i can go to the us or whatever no don't do that um the, the, the thing is a lot of the women that will first approach you are not the ones you want to be marrying anyway a lot of the women that are um see it's very difficult to define things without offending somebody these days and let's just say a higher value. There you go, I've offended somebody. Um, when I say higher value, I'm talking about a lot of the women out of the, the lower classes in the Philippines may not have ever been to school, may not have even done high school. Um, they may have done primary if they were lucky or been left to be looked after by a grandmother or whatever. Um, so their educational level is not very good. The comprehension of the world and everything else is mixed matched based on a lot of things like TV and not really having a world understanding or being, or even a lot of people do not understand the responsibilities of getting into a, a marriage or something. It, sometimes it's pushed on them from relatives. So I would just say avoid that like the plague. Um, do not get into that sort of social group whatsoever. There is no need for you to get into that social group. And I'll, I know some guys do, and I'll get some people argue with it. Well, we've been happily married for ages. Don't I? I'm just trying to increase your chances here. This is, so, you know, at the end of the day, it's like I can look for a needle in a haystack or I can open a pack of needles. You know, that that's the way I look at it. Um, so... The first thing I would say is social groups are important, but also you will find that you meet people by taking your time. Um, I used to advise people going to the malls, and I, I've actually gone back on that now because I then realized the last, the last time I was in Ayala that a lot of guys go there and hassle the women that work in the shops now, and I just thought I'm part, partly to blame for telling people to do this. So um, I'm retracting that. Because the problem is now you've actually created an environment where a lot of these women are meeting guys and a lot of the guys 
I find them easy targets for uh, liaisons outside of work. So I don't recommend that anymore. Um, it's sad. It is sad because meeting women like that was very easy because women are very social, happy to meet you, etc. And now that's been disrupted. Um, the next side of this being that the women that are worth meeting and marrying are often harder to meet. A lot of them will already have a job. They have a work ethic. They have responsibilities. They have an understanding of different things. There's a few guys that I know have married women that already have kids. With that, they recognize that the, the foreigner has taken responsibility for their children. Um, as such, that has quite a high tick in the box for them in the sense of connecting with you. Um, because I don't know any Filipino guy that's done that. I'll be honest with you. I do not know one Filipino guy that has taken in other people's kids. Um, so from that point of view, that that's one of the things you'll take. Because in the Philippines, guys generally don't go with women that have kids. Um, they also may not go with, guy, with women that are... Um, have engaged in sexual acts. Let's say that they are, they're not, um, they're not uh, as pure as silk, let's put it that way. Uh, that stuff still exists, even though a lot of people will say, well, no, that's, that's all changed. It depends on the social circles. Um, say the problem is I'm trying not to say certain people because there's certain things that I know with different people that have occurred so but you know people not actually engaging in any sexual liaisons and never have done until their wedding night uh, some people that still exist they're actually they're actually religious they're, they're actually following it a lot of these teens and whatever that have become pregnant they are not following religion they're selective they then become religious. You'll see that you see it on Facebook all the time. I uh, pray for God to provide. Do this, do that. It's taking removing responsibility a lot of the time because they got the, they create this mess and now trying to get something to change their scenario for them. But the better women you are more likely to meet by not looking for them. This this is a bizarre thing. You're going to come across them if you're like living in an area. And just traveling around you know not going out your way to meet people but simply going to the resort for a swim and having lunch going to um, uh, going out for meals and things like that you will bump into people um, somebody else mentioned they've been in the Philippines a while a few years and not had people approach them I find that really strange because and I'll show in the near future how easy it is to meet people in the Philippines and I'm not that this is going to be a sexual age. I'm thinking of just showing how people are quite happy to talk to you. Um, but yeah, I mean, you're better off arriving in the Philippines, renting a place, and then just traveling around a bit. It doesn't take long to meet people. And the main thing is not to rush into it. Now, why this would work more there than in the West in the West, I find too much is money orientated or it's based on a service. For example, if you're getting on a plane, a lot of the time it's more just ticking and get on the flight and away you go. In the Philippines, you can chat to people behind the counters and they'll quite happily have a chat with you for five minutes. It's just more laid back. Um, I do find here in Spain, people are more laid back once they know you. But most of the time they won't say hello unless you say hello first. In the, in the Philippines, you'll find people saying hello to you first, which means that the engagement is much easier. Now, I'm not gonna get onto the Me Too stuff and that too much, because I do think that has a lot to blame um, with how people don't want to approach people in the West. And, Somebody brought up today the 2% drop in birth rates in the US. That's that's no surprise in all honesty. I'm expecting these sort of things to be happening as people become more defensive in looking after themselves. 
this is why MGTOW is quite an important thing because even if feminists turn around and say well they're the same you know they're the opposite of us it's like I don't think it is see the thing is I'm trying not to get onto the political debate side a lot of the feminist stuff is pushed for an agenda a lot of the MGTOW stuff is basically just saying do what you like don't want to know and moving aside you know just pushing to one side because that's why it's men go their own way and not men have more rights or men have this or whatever it's just simply saying all right do what you like i don't want to know um and i think that's that's the thing where where they're trying to say well it's the feminist version of the the male version of feminism i think that's incorrect i think it's miles off for the majority of things because let's face it politically feminism has more of a voice feminism shouts the loudest and often does the rules to sue itself that article i posted yesterday if you read it and the, the the insert i put shows exactly what i'm talking about because they start off with going after the legal system and then decide well then we'll deem what we like and say what's wrong because if we can't do it legally well i assume they'll just target people in social media etc etc um but i do think they're actually creating a political shift they will have the opposite effect in the long term um, certain groups are changing the way people think and I do think we'll see where that goes but trying to get back on topic I do think you're more likely to meet a partner that you can connect with easier in the Philippines now I do recommend going to people that have worked um, sorry are working have strong values etc and it will take time to meet people and that's why i say don't focus on the relationship if you've come to this point in your life the relationship will appear if you focus the let's just say you got married for 10 years and then you've come out of it why are you in such a rush to get into a new relationship take your time you know especially if you're retired you've got all the time in the world um, there's plenty of stuff to be doing in the Philippines. Traveling around is cheap, um, but also it means that you're not embedded into one area long term. Because if you get into a relationship and then start um, setting up home, you're limiting your ability to travel. This is this is one thing about the apartments I have. Is some people have said they're very basic, Matt. There's not a lot in there. But it's like with Jay's moved in there. Jay's um bought his own stereo system his own tv he got cable tv da, da, da. because the idea being is if jay decided he wants to go and travel for a month or two he just locks his door and the the cc there's another cctv system going in as well at the minute um he is a secure unit you know at the end of the day he goes and comes back um and i know barry jordan's there at the minute as well so we'll see how they get but the point being is those places are designed to be simple because you can buy whatever you like do what you like in them the whole point is as long as you're paying the rent i don't care you, as long as you don't damage the places um because that that's a prime example of you set your central location and that one's obviously in the middle of the visayas being cebu it gives you access to the queen of the south and heading over to Mactan. You can get a flight pretty much anywhere around the Philippines and out in, right across Asia. In the same way, you get onto the pier, you've got boats all the way around you and be over to Bohol in a couple of hours, etc. And drive south into the Negros. The, the, the point being is the opportunity is there. And that, that's why I like that. So that's why I set those units up. They're designed for a maximum of a couple not interested in having kids of that staying in them um they're, they're not big enough they're, they're designed for a single or a couple that's it but that that's set up that way for that reason um yeah uh what else could i say yes yeah, so i do think you you just take your time it's because people are more approachable it's not because oh it's all poverty 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 my wife was fairly independent before she met me she she had a good job she's already um a very independent woman anyway she's capable of looking after herself she's a university graduate 
Um, she could have gone abroad if she wanted to as well. She's capable of doing it. And that, that's, the, that's the funny thing. I mean, if you look at um, Paok, which is one of her classmates, he, he does graphics design. I think he does them for Toyota. And he's not in the Philippines. Um, and Kit, another one of April's classmates, she's in Los Angeles. She was doing the CGI for 300, and she's been to a lot of the movie stuff, um, you know, the awards and things. So the assumption that a lot of people are trapped in the Philippines is based on social class. Um, it's not that everybody's locked into this poverty thing. And, and quite honestly, I do prefer people in the middle, even in the UK. Because people ask me about, um, it's like the director level stuff with Carillion. I have an issue with those people because they're pompous, arrogant, and often completely stupid. Um, and they know that I think of that when I think about them or the stuff they've done. Um, because when you try to get into engineering stuff you realize they have no idea what you're talking about this is why they're going to hide in golf courses and stuff well that is a higher level they're hired because they're yes men they are all incompetent at that level you, you probably got one in 15 that are any use but the, the point being is you I am I'm not happy at that level I don't like it I, I find that people destructive, dismissive, self-centered. Um, I prefer it being in the middle. Now, do I have an issue with people from the poverty side? No, <laughs> nothing at all. <laughs> but it's not a social group that I associate with out of um, necessity or um, a belonging, in, in the sense that I like doing some projects like giving computers to the schools and things like that but at the same time when you see some of the stuff that people do and a lot of it's down to education and things um like people stealing all your vegetables and things and they'll go well you know because they're poor they're poor yes but poor doesn't doesn't mean you can steal poor doesn't justify it you spend months growing that stuff, and yet they think it's perfectly all right to steal from everybody around them. Those, that's a prime example of why I don't like. Mixing, mixing too much with people of that social, social group. I like sitting in the middle. I like just being with people that have work ethics, etc., etc. go to work, do their stuff, happily married or happily single. Um, but not tied into a lot of the stuff that is related to, well, it's all right to steal for you because you've got more money than me. Or at the, uh, the top level, it's all right to steal all your work and write it as my own um, because I'm in a position where I can do that, which is really <laughs> um, But yeah, mm. I'll leave it there because I'm going off on a tangent again. Thanks for watching.